The Bible warned us, never trust a woman who does this. The birth of Samson stands out due to its extraordinary nature. His father Manoah from the tribe of Dan was married to a woman who was unable to have children. Remarkably, an angel announced Samson's forthcoming birth to Manoah's wife while she was alone, highlighting the significance of the event. The importance of Samson's birth is underscored by its announcement by an angel, placing him in the well-regarded company of figures like John the Baptist, whose birth was announced to his father Zechariah by the angel Gabriel and Jesus, whose birth was foretold to Mary, also by Gabriel. Such divine announcements indicate that Samson was destined for greatness, a fact underscored by the angelic proclamation. During this visitation, the angel provided Manoah's wife with specific instructions, as their child was to be a Nazarite from birth. According to the instructions in Numbers chapter 6, verses 2 to 5, Nazarites were to abstain from wine or alcoholic drinks, avoid cutting their hair and not use a razor on their head, dedicating themselves to the Lord for a certain period. In Samson's case, he was divinely chosen to be a lifelong Nazirite, a vow that even his mother was instructed to observe during her pregnancy. As Samson grew, he was blessed by God and destined to lead Israel against their foes. God endowed Samson with extraordinary strength, making him the strongest man mentioned in the Bible. His supernatural power enabled him to kill a lion with his bare hands and single-handedly defeat an army of 1,000 men. With a fresh jawbone of a donkey, Samson picked it up and struck down 1,000 Philistines with it. Among his remarkable feats, Samson once escaped an ambush in Gaza by ripping the city's gates from their posts and carrying them to the top of a hill facing Hebron. Samson's unique strength and the divine plan for his life marked him as a man of exceptional potential, destined to achieve great things for Israel. Despite being the strongest man in the Bible, Samson had a significant weakness, women. This vulnerability was not unique to Samson. Other prominent and powerful men of God shared similar challenges. For example, King David, despite his great strength and leadership, also struggled with his desires for women. Samson, renowned for his immense strength, had a significant weakness, his attraction to women, especially to one named Delilah. This attraction proved to be fatal. Are you familiar with the term fatal attraction? It refers to an intense attraction to someone or something that is so overpowering. It causes the individual to lose all sense of reason and logic when dealing with their feelings of attraction. Let's turn our attention to Delilah, a key figure in the story of Samson. Delilah was primarily motivated by her love for money, displaying characteristics of being self-centered and focused on her own interests above others. The Philistine rulers saw this trait in Delilah and decided to exploit it for their advantage. They approached her with a proposition, to seduce Samson in order to discover the secret behind his extraordinary strength. Their aim was to find a way to defeat him. They promised Delilah a substantial reward for her cooperation. 1,100 pieces of silver from each ruler if she succeeded in her task. Accepting the offer, Delilah entered into a relationship with Samson. This relationship was not based on mutual trust or affection, but was a strategic move on Delilah's part to fulfill her end of the bargain with the Philistines. During their time together, Delilah attempted to uncover the secret of Samson's strength by directly asking him on three separate occasions. Each time, rather than revealing the truth, Samson deceived her with false explanations. Intriguingly, after each of these conversations, Samson found himself facing the very scenarios he had fabricated in his lies to Delilah, Judges 16, 6, 12. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now men were lying in wait, staying with her in the room, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me what you may be bound with. So he said to her, 
If they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Therefore Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson, and men were lying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arms like a thread. This happened for a third time also, and her attempt failed once again. In Delilah's last-ditch effort, she manipulated Samson by saying, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and have not told me where your great strength lies. And because Samson was stuck in lust, or love, or emotion, or whatever it was, he finally told her the truth after. She had betrayed him three times already. He said, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now I want to highlight how evil Delilah was and how she only had love for one thing, and that was money. Delilah called the lords of the Philistines to come to her with her money in their hands, and the Bible says in verse 19, Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Delilah's feigned love for Samson, motivated purely by financial gain, is a stark reminder of a troubling reality that persists to this day. Our world is populated with individuals whose intentions are not always pure or genuine. It's crucial to recognize that not every smile is a gesture of goodwill. Just as Delilah concealed her true motives behind a facade of affection, Many people we encounter might not have our best interests at heart. This cautionary perspective urges us not to be naive. The presence of a beautiful face does not guarantee the purity of one's soul. There's a profound difference between appearance and reality, and it's important to be discerning. I will repeat this one more time. There's a profound difference between appearance and reality, and it's important to be discerning. Unfortunately, there are genuinely good and trusting individuals who are inclined to see the best in everyone. This naivety, while commendable for its optimism, can sometimes lead to overlooking the complexities of human sinful nature. You live in a world of sinners, not everyone has your best intentions. The first murder in human history was between two brothers, Cain and Abel. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers. We must come to terms with the fact that we do not live in a utopian paradise. We live in a flawed world marked by sin and moral failings. This world is home to individuals who may act with malice or selfish ambition. Recognizing this does not mean living in constant suspicion, but rather approaching relationships with a balanced sense of awareness and caution. Not every person you meet, whether man or woman, wants the best for you. Not every person you meet has the same moral compass as you. That is the cold hard truth that both men and women need to understand. The Bible speaks of a seared conscience. In biblical terms, a seared conscience refers to a state where an individual's conscience has become insensitive or callous toward moral right and wrong. You live in a world full of people with seared consciences. In 2021, I remember watching a news report of a wife who was poisoning her husband by putting Drano in her husband's drinks. For those of you who do not know, Drano is a chemical drain cleaner. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The husband put a secret camera in the kitchen to gather evidence. This is the world we live in. Even strong men have weaknesses. Even strong men have struggles. David was a great man, but he had a problem with women. Wise King Solomon is known as the wisest king in the Bible, but he had weaknesses. Job who is described as an upright and blameless man, had a weakness with his eyes, so much so that he had to make a covenant with his eyes. Samson operated in his emotions. Samson operated in his emotions and decided to ignore all the glaring red flags. This woman attempted to subdue him on three separate occasions and failed because Samson had lied to her. Samson knew for a fact this woman was out to get him. Samson knew that this woman could not be trusted hence why he lied to her on three separate occasions. And in the world we live in today, there are still men and women like Delilah who are self-seeking and self-absorbed, who will do whatever it takes to push their agendas forward, 
who will quite literally stab you in the back and send you to your grave. There are so many men's lives that have been ruined because of a Delilah. There are so many women's lives that have been ruined. This is the stark truth about our world. There are truly God-fearing, remarkable women among us. To claim otherwise would be a falsehood originating from the deepest deceit. There are indeed good women out there. One must only be diligent in their search to find them. However, it's also true that women resembling Delilah with less than noble intentions exist in the same world. In your life, you need to make sure that, unlike Samson, you do not let lust and emotions cloud your judgment. And today, we are going to learn a lesson against two things, and those two things are emotions and lust. One, emotions. We all have emotions, and emotions are not evil. Having emotions is not a weakness. However, nowhere in the Bible are we encouraged to listen to our emotions. Nowhere in the Bible are we instructed to follow our emotions. You cannot be dictated by your feelings. But this is exactly what Delilah told Samson to do. She said, how can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? Delilah was a cunning woman, and she appealed to his emotions. She did not appeal to his mind, because if she did, his mind would have told him, don't trust this woman, look at her track record of deceit. But Delilah tugged on his emotions. As a man or a woman, you cannot make decisions based on your feelings. If you want to ruin your life, make a decision based on your feelings. Samson was a great man, but his feelings blinded him to the hardcore facts that he was dealing with an evil woman. And there are people who are listening to me right now who, just like Samson, have been called to do amazing things, but they have a weakness in their life. And if we are going to be 100% honest with one another, I can say I have made some bad decisions in my life because of emotions. Rather than making a decision based on my knowledge of the Word of God, I made a decision based on my feelings. We all have. You will not find a single verse in the Bible where God encourages you to follow your feelings or where God communicates to a person through his or her feelings. Feelings can be deceptive, feelings change, and if we're truly going to be honest, feelings are confusing. Look at how many people in the world who loved one another a decade ago and fast forward 10 years later, they hate one another. Feelings change. Don't be ruled by your feelings like Samson. Be interested in the person's character. If Samson was interested in Delilah's character, he would have known that, yes, I am really into this girl. Yes, she is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. But she is an evil woman who loves money more than anything else. Number two, lust. Lust is a significant problem. It's easy for us to point fingers at Samson, suggesting he should have seen it coming. We might say that he walked straight into his downfall. However, Samson wasn't the first to make poor decisions because of lust, nor has he been the last. Throughout history, individuals have repeatedly made detrimental choices driven by lust. The truth is, lust can weaken even the strongest among yous. Yes, it's a sobering fact. Lust has the power to weaken both strong men and strong women alike. It clouds judgment, leads to destruction, and can dismantle a home. Lust can ravage your health, deplete your finances, and steal your joy. It can plunge you into depths you never imagined possible and erect a formidable barrier between you and God. Let's emphasize this point. Lust has the capability to create a profound divide between you and God. It's crucial to recognize the pervasive impact of lust not just on our relationships and personal lives, but on our spiritual well-being too. Judges 16.20 And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Lust has the power to create a significant barrier between you and God. This is starkly illustrated in the biblical narrative, where it said be, but he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. As individuals, it's crucial to understand that certain actions and choices can erect a wall between us and God. Among these, lust stands out as particularly destructive. Fatal attraction goes well beyond a normal interest in another person. It escalates to a point where one may become morbidly infatuated with their object of affection, leading to situations that are not only unhealthy but also perilous. 
Unchecked lust can leave you bewildered, questioning, how did I end up here? This was precisely the predicament Samson found himself in. My insistence on addressing this issue stems from witnessing its effects firsthand. I've seen how lust can dismantle lives. A single decision, motivated by lust, can irrevocably alter the course of your existence. Therefore, it's imperative to avoid making decisions driven by your emotions or lust.